If you're one of many people that are still struggling to get sponsorship for your sport, then this episode has got something for you. Hello everyone, this is Enzo Mucci and welcome to episode number 9 of the Race Driver Coach Show and we're all about sponsorship today. This is a main topic for so many people out there, not just race drivers, but people in any sport or people who are trying to gather investment or partnerships to help them further their career. Maybe they've even got an app they're trying to get people to invest in. This is all related. And what I want to talk to you about today is the top 11 mistakes that I see people making when they're trying to get sponsorship or investment. And to be honest, this was inspired by over the last few weeks, since especially making these videos, I've had people email me, say, Enz, can you just check my proposal? Can you check my cold call letter? Can you just have a look at what I'm doing to make sure that I'm not messing up or to give me some free advice? And I usually do. But what I find is that I'm pretty much telling people the same thing, which means that most of us, most of you out there, are making the same errors and finding that you're not getting the results that you want to in the world of sponsorship. When you know for a fact that sponsorship is still alive, companies can still get value, but why are they not giving it to you? And that made me think, okay, I've got to do an episode on the errors that people are making so they can watch out for if they're doing that or they can improve their campaign. And this started at the top five, my top five mistakes that sportsmen or drivers, whoever you are, are making when they're looking for a sponsorship or investment. But five wasn't enough, there's more than that. We're tripping up all over the place. So I said, okay, let's just do the top seven. No, still more. Top 10, there's one more. So I did a top 11. These, I'm gonna run you down now from 11 down to one are my top 11 mistakes that I see people making when they're looking for sponsorship. Take a look at these, make sure that you're not falling for these traps and making these mistakes that so many people are making because in doing so, you're causing the whole campaign to be virtually an impossible mission. You've got to speak the language of businesses nowadays. This is what this top 11 is going to help you do. So let's get started. In at number 11 is people don't realize how long this takes. You can't be a dabbler. When it comes to getting sponsorship, this is a full-time job and you've gotta be pretty much prepared for it to take about five years to take off fully. So you get this wheel really going. Because at the end of the day, companies have got to trust you with their dollars. And then they've got to trust that you're gonna make them more dollars in them giving you that, the return on investment. They're not just gonna say, okay, I like it because you've got a career that you wanna follow and you've got your dreams, here's some money. Here's some of my child's inheritance so you can go racing and I know you're gonna be back for more next year and don't worry, I'm gonna keep giving it you just for a sticker on the car. That stuff doesn't happen. If you're thinking like that, then that's one major reason why you haven't found sponsorship yet. You've got to buy into the fact that this is gonna take many years, sometimes 10 years, like any business, if you've got an idea and you're trying to get investment for it, which is pretty much what you're doing when you're racing or competing as a sports person, you've got your idea of what you want, you need someone else to bankroll it, then you've got to spend the time in attracting these people and getting their trust in getting a, a track record, should we say, of you delivering for sponsors. So then them sponsors talk to other sponsors and it starts it going. This isn't just a part-time, this is full-time for a long time. So if you're thinking about getting sponsorship or you've been trying for the last few years, understand that this takes a long time. And even any sports agency or sponsorship broker will say the same. Say, so yeah, we started in a small office just with a few sponsors and it took us a long time to be taken seriously and to get some of the big hitters. None of them did it overnight. If they did, if they just got lucky and got one big sponsor on the first day or the first year of working, keeping hold of that sponsor and then attracting more took a lot longer. So get this in now. Number 11, it will take a long time. You've got to buy into the fact and be prepared to say, okay, I probably can't race what I want to race next year or this coming season. I've got to play the long game, learn the industry sponsorship, learn how to do it, do it every single day. I've got to be careful. I don't give away some of the other top 11 here and 
and just hack away at it every single day, every single week until something happens. That's really it. At number 10, people make it all about them. Now this sounds a bit strange, but when I do get these proposals and cold call letters and approaches that people send to me for advice and say, how can I word it, change it, etc., I notice that most of it, especially the, the first part, is all about the person who's selling it. They're saying things like, this is my dream. I know through hard work and persistence, I can win and I want to take your company with me. Uh, it means everything to me. All these things, these fluffy, this fluffy stuff that has no relevance to what you're going to provide for a company. Now, a company owner will look at it and they'll open this up, whatever you've sent them or an email, and they'll just read about somebody who wants to achieve their dream. That may sound good from your side, but from their side, it's like, so what? I don't give a toss about that. I've got my own dreams. I've got staff outside that are on strike right now. I've got to pay this bill. My daughter's just got a problem at school. They've got real problems, not just in their business, but in life. Their head is full. And then you're expecting them to say, oh, this person's got a dream. This is amazing. I want to be a part of that and help them. No one, no company is going to fall for that unless you know them personally. It's like a family member or something. But if you're going to corporates that you don't know and you're trying to make them fall in love with how much you want it just by writing it on a piece of paper or typing it, it's never going to wash. You're never, ever going to get something from that. And if you do, tell me because we'll showcase it. But I pretty much guarantee that's not going to work. That's not going to help them think, wow, you're going to grow my company. You're going to make me more wealthy by you chasing this dream. And then looking into you and saying, oh, actually, you've never raced. You haven't raced much. You haven't got much results. Now nah, I'll pass. I've got a, a speed skater here, a football player here. I've got all these different sports per, uh, personalities that I could choose. And then you just saying you want it really bad and that you just give me some exposure and stuff. And you're expecting hundreds of thousands. Nah, straight in the trash can. Get it through to yourself now. The companies that you're approaching, especially cold calling, you know, you don't know them and they don't know you. They don't care about you. They don't care about your story if it's not really that impressive. All they care about is how is your sport and you going to help them grow their company, going to bring in more clients and going to give them B2B relationships if that's what they want or marketing or branding, whatever it is that you think that company wants through your research. So don't just approach them, and this is a big don't, and just spiel off how much it means to you and make it all about you and then a little bit about what you're going to do for them and then a massive thing at the bottom saying, this is how much that's going to cost you. It's too confusing. They're like, why the hell should I pay for your career, your dream, when that's the only thing you care about? You're obviously not caring about my dream, my company, so screw you. Mistake number nine, People send shoddy presentations. Now just remember, this is a high-end sport that you're selling. Glamour, speed, technology, danger. And it all comes, you just think of motorsport, all the sport you're in, and you say, okay, what image has it got? Because that is a selling point for sponsorship. The image that it's got, certain companies are gonna want that image. They haven't got the patience to spend years and years reminding people that they have that image. Instead, they could sponsor a race driver or a sports person in a sport that's very glamorous, if that's the image they want, and we can latch onto the back of it just because we're sponsoring it. People would associate that sport image, again, with our company, and that will help us have our own brand. This is why you see BMW and Golf they're so close, aren't they? You got the sport of golf, not the Volkswagen golf, the sport of golf, and again, a free BMW or Mercedes if they win. They're only doing that, well, part of it is because of the association, the type of people that are in golf. They want to look professional and to a certain sector, certain age. People are going to want that with motorsport. And it is glamorous. It's got to look professional, sexy. But if you're sending them a presentation, a sponsorship proposal that looks cheap, it's got spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes, rubbish photos, pixelated photos. It's all out of proportion. It's not well written. And it doesn't really portray what you're trying to sell. So the words might say glamour, but they look at this presentation, they're going, 
That actually looks like something I'll get through the letterbox, like a pizza delivery place. How can I trust this person? I can't. They'll think that straight away. They'll judge it straight away. If it doesn't look like what it's trying to sell, like any company, any expensive company that's got an expensive product or service, which is what you are, if they gave you a, a real crappy presentation or brochure to say, this is what we sell, you'd be like, ugh, nah, it's okay. I'll go for this one. This one looks like the, this company's got attention to detail. Don't fall for that trap. Don't be the person that says, you know, I've got all these great benefits, but in the way I present it, you're not giving me a chance. But that's what so many people are doing. They're, they are falling for that trap. They're just doing it at home on their, on their desktop and they're just saying, okay, that'll do. I think it looks pretty good, but it's just a Word document. You can't sell a sponsorship program if you're offering all these glamorous things, if it's just on a Word doc, well, uh, not well written either. Come on, shape up. Portray what you are trying to sell. Make them believe that you can deliver on what you're promising them. Up front, you can do that by having a great presentation and it doesn't need to cost much money. If you go on fiverr.com, surely you've seen that, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, you've got all these people that can help you for less than a fiver. Obviously some are more, but a lot of them are less than five dollars and they'll put a presentation for you, if together for you, if you explain what you want. And you can go through all of these adverts and say, yeah, you can do that for me. And just give it a shot. You don't have to do it yourself. You just supply them with the content, they'll put something out that looks beautiful. Then you go out and print it yourself. There's no excuse. If you're sending out material that looks like you're not really selling anything over $10 or 10 pounds, then that's the sort of treatment you're gonna get. They're not gonna believe you. They've got to be sold on whatever you're selling them so you don't have to utter a word. Then you know you're doing it. Then you know you're portraying everything in the right way. So do not shortcut the presentation, the sponsorship proposal side. Get it right. Mistake number eight, relying on only one method of contact. Now, how are you contacting people? Are you writing to them, phoning them, knocking on their door, getting to them through LinkedIn or Facebook or any other platform? What are you doing? Because what I find is a lot of people just do one route, maybe two, but usually just one. They just keep sending out letters or they just keep sending out emails. Now remember, emails are very flat nowadays. They do not work. In fact, a letter is probably more unique nowadays, something that you actually post by hand to the HQ of what whoever it is you're trying to get sponsorship from or a partnership with. Don't just rely on one. My advice is to do them all. And this can go anywhere, right? Say if you've got a company, it's a big company that you're gonna approach, you've done all your research, and you say to yourself, how can I get in touch with the CEO? I've tried, I've tried writing, I've tried phoning, I just can't get through to them. You can take it one step further. Nowadays, you can find out who works there. You can find them on Facebook. This company, who are all the employees that work there? You know what? I'm gonna contact virtually all of them that I can and say something like, does your CEO realize how much motorsport can help their, their company grow? And send a message to them with that as the title. Does your CEO know X? And that's your punchline. That's your sales pitch. That's your elevator pitch. And then one day, if you keep doing that to all these employees, they will talk to the marketing team or the CEO and say, look, have you seen this? Have you seen it? And they'll say, yeah, so-and-so mentioned that as well. This is getting through the back door. This is getting the workforce to contact the people above for you because you're pestering them. And it's, it's not gonna get you into trouble if you do it correctly. So what I'm trying to say here is don't just send an email, send it off and then forget about it and then do another email because you could send a thousand emails and you'll find out that you keep getting the same response back, nothing. You'll get a few polite ones maybe, but usually emails, there's so many of them. Somebody who runs a company gets hundreds a day. And if they see yours come up and it's not really a list of priority at that moment, sponsor, sponsoring you in your sport, and they'll be like, nah, delete. They'll just see it as spam. They'll probably block you if they've got the time or the secretary will because it's not really on their radar. You need to get in with them in their face maybe. You've got to try it all. You've got to try emails. You've got to try writing. You've got to try phoning. You've got to try going to the HQ 
of whoever this person, this company is, are knocking on the door and trying to get a meeting with their marketing team or somebody who's in control or would give a decision on sponsorship or even the person below. Or like I say, even target the people that work there, especially if you know somebody who works at this company that you're gonna target. If you know them, then maybe they can be your referral. They can help you get into the door. But don't just stick to one method of emailing because I know so many of you do because you're not confident enough to go and talk to a company owner or a marketing team face to face or even on the phone. So you just blast an email out, you're quite happy with it, send and you feel like you've done something. When you know most emails are just baseball batted back and ignored. So don't just trust emails. Try all of the different ways it takes to communicate with somebody, even if you have to accidentally bump into them at where you know they hang out at the golf club again or something. All right, so promise me this. Don't just send emails. Try all of the methods of communication that are available to you now. And nowadays, we've got more than ever, so there's no excuse. At number seven, we have forgetting to align your online presence. Now, what does that mean? This means you're trying to portray something as an individual, right? Or even if you set a company up that promotes other companies through sports, say if you've gone that far, that's what you're gonna do now. I'm gonna promote companies as a job through sport, and that's gonna pay for my sport. Clever if you have, and it's something we can speak out of future date. But anyway, if you're trying to portray a certain image, right? You're this great race driver or sports personality and you've got big dreams and you can offer companies things that they're gonna grow their, their company and meet their goals. But then they go and research you online and they look at your Facebook, because that comes up probably straight away on Google, right? And they can see that you're just drunk every night, that you're not the kind of person that fits their image should we say, to put it politely. And you look amateurish on your website, you know, it's just half finished, it's just cruddy, different types of fonts all over the place, rubbish pictures, not updated. And then a tiny page on sponsorship, just call this number if you want to sponsor me. And they can see that it looks amateurish. And it doesn't really get across what they're expecting from somebody who's promising stuff like you. They won't touch you. The internet now offers them a free resource to see what you're all about so they can research you. If they don't like what they see, they won't go near you. So make sure you give yourself a bit of a spring clean. Look look up your name on Google, see what comes up. If there's nothing if there's things there that don't really align with what you're trying to portray to companies so they take you seriously, then delete it, get rid of it. Do a spring clean. Make sure your online presence is aligned with the type of person that you are want, you're wanting to be in this life and you're, who you're trying to sell to companies, to sponsors. Don't trip up on this because it's very easy to rectify and it's very easy for companies to see or to feel that you're a fraud. Now we don't want them thinking that because you're not. So sort that out. Number six, not knowing your strengths and weaknesses. Now, as a competitor, you're pretty good at this. You know what you're good at, your strengths. And you also know, people keep telling you what your weaknesses are. You're always working on these. You're trying to hone these and you're trying to improve the weaknesses. No different to your sponsorship. If you're not so good at cold calling, you haven't got the confidence, you don't know how to do it. You're not so good at selling, pitching to people, talking to a boardroom, public speaking. Maybe you're not good at writing you don't feel like you have the creative edge to make a really nice pre presentation, then instead of ignoring it, instead of just doing them anyway and tripping up each time, you've got two options. Look at these weaknesses that are holding you back, you think, you think, I can't quite get this, this I can't do this cold call because I don't know how to do it, so then you put it off and you write an email. That's where it's hampering you. If that's the case, not just cold calling, but any other area that is not allowing you to get sponsorship because it's a weakness of yours at the moment, then, Two options, you learn how to do it, you apply yourself and get better at that area, or you shortcut the system and get somebody to help you, get somebody who is good in that area and offer them something as a reward to help you. And they will. If the reward's nice enough, you could go to many business people, some, some that you know and some that you don't, entrepreneurs, up and coming young entrepreneurs that wanna make their way in business and give them an offer, a partnership of, if you help me get sponsorship by doing these things for me, because I'm not very good at them at the moment, I will give you 10, 20% of whatever you find, whatever you're part of 
that we generate sponsorship for, you can keep 20% and we'll draw up an agreement, anything they've helped you with. Loads of people will do that. They'll be like, wow, that's exciting. I'm actually a sponsor finder for a sports person. That's quite tantalizing and I can earn mega money. I mean, can you imagine if I got 50 grand for this driver or this sportsman or 100 grand or 200 grand, I could earn a really decent wage. And actually they might say 30%. They'll keep 30% of whatever they find. Okay, to be honest, that's still better than nothing because you wouldn't have got it in the first place without them. That's not important right now, the, the percentages. Basically, what I want to say to you is know what you're not good at and what you are good at. So if you've got a strength, you spend more time there. If you're good at pitching, then you go to all these network network events. You go to hold your own little seminars of showing companies how to grow through motorsport or through sport in general. You can teach them. Ever thought about that? That's if you're good on the public face-to-face -face side. But if you're not, you can get somebody else to do that for you. If you're not good at writing, get somebody else to do that for you. Again, go to fiverr.com and look at all these experts. They can help you. It's not rocket science. Just make sure you're spending time on the areas that you're good at and then get help on the areas that you're not good at or learn and get better. Mistake number five is thinking that the cost of competing is the same as the value of sponsorship. That sounds confusing, but let me explain. You go to a race team and they say, it's gonna cost you 300 grand to compete with us in this championship. So you say, right, I've gotta get hold of 300 grand and then I can compete with them, brilliant. I've gotta go out and find sponsorship for 300 grand. So what I'll do is I'll put a sponsorship package and proposal together and it will cover most of that and I'll go and sell it. You've just missed out on something something vital and that is the cost of the championship has nothing to do with the value of the sponsorship and marketing that it provides so say if the, the championship's 300 grand but it's not really on tv especially live it's on tv but three weeks later at two in the morning that's not worth much that's not worth anywhere near a sticker on a car on a show that's two in the morning weeks later is not worth anywhere near 300 grand probably worth 10, 20 grand, if that. The value, the true dollar that it costs to get on that car is nowhere near what the team is charging you. Okay, you say, okay, I've got, I've got hospitality thrown in there with the 300 grand. Great, what's that cost per head, per race? Add it all up. Still doesn't come to 300 grand. So what you're being charged from a race team is a lot more than the value you can provide a company through sponsoring you, the marketing, but it's just not there. They're not related. If you said, okay, during, during this championship, I can offer a company all these things. This TV exposure, it's not great. This hospitality, what else is included that I can offer a sponsor? Okay, I'll put it in there. Delivery on the race truck. Now you can virtually say what that's worth. You can evaluate, you can put a value on it. And I bet you it will be nowhere near the 300 that you need to find. So if you're thinking of offering a company all these benefits for 300, they'll know straight away it's not worth that. They could get so much more if they spend 300. Can you imagine if they spent 300 on a new website, on SEO, on social media marketing? They'd just completely blast every competitor out of the water. They could do functions and all sorts for that money. But you're saying I'm gonna put you a sticker on the car for you because it's on TV at two in the morning, not worth 300 grand. So be very careful how you price your sponsorship packages. What you really need to do is find that out. What does this championship offer for a company and what's the value of it? What does the team offer? What can I offer within that 300 grand? And then evaluate it. See how much that is really in real world. Some of it's not very easy to, to price up, but you can get an idea. An expert, an advertising company, a PR company can tell you if you show them a sponsorship proposal, they can give you a value for it. Say so in the real world, what would this be worth? And that's what you sell it for. You don't sell it for the price of the championship because that's got nothing to do with it. The price of the championship is just what the team is charging to run a car for you, to transport it, to compete, to enter and to pay their mechanics. Nothing to do with what the true value of what you can offer promotional wise. Mistake number four, not having a good sales pitch. Okay, now if you do, 
right? Opposite to what we just said. If you do have something that's of true value and you know how much it's worth, you can price it up and show how you got to that number, then you've got to be able to communicate it. You've got to become a good salesperson. That's what it's really all about. So you've got the product, the sponsorship. You know how much it is, just like any company. But now you've got to get it out there. You've got to sell it in the best way. You've got to shout about this thing and get other people to shout about how great your sponsorship proposal is or your marketing through sport campaign or package that you're selling to them, how great it is and how it's going to deliver. And you've got to do it with passion. You've got to know how to sell face-to-face, -face, through type, through phone, every single medium. This is where, again, you might need somebody to help you, but you've got to be able to sell. And to sell, all you're gonna do is go to a company, find out what they want to achieve, and then show them, because it might not, you're just as curious as they are, show them if motorsport or your sport is a viable option for them to take, and it will help them achieve their goals. You've gotta know what their goals are to do that, right? That's part of sales. You might get there, they'll tell you what they're trying to achieve and you might find out that racing or the sport that you're in is not really suited for them. So you say, okay, I think this isn't good for this moment, but maybe something in arts is. You know, there's a concert somewhere, maybe they could sponsor that and you sort that out for them. So you're becoming a bit of a sponsorship professional, expert. That's really how to become a good seller, right? You're going to somebody, finding out their goals, if you haven't done beforehand, and then showing if your product, your service fits or not and together you find that out. And that kind of leads us into number three. People don't show proof that it works. If you're trying to sell to somebody, you know, again, you've got something you really believe in, you know it works, you've been told that it's worth a certain value and you're out there selling it, brilliant. You've, you're far ahead of anybody else at the moment, what you've done. Then you've got to prove it. This is the next level. How are you going to prove to a company that this has worked in the past and this will work again for them? Have you got case studies? Have you got stats? Have you got all the demographics of the people that you're gonna put their brand in front of and how many they are? there are of them? You need stats. You need evidence that this can work for their company. Again, it's a big decision for them to put the sponsorship dollars in you. So you've gotta show them some kind of proof that's gonna logically help them say, this makes sense. It's your job to do that. So don't go, go there empty handed. Don't go there saying, this is great. This is how it could work for you. Instead, show them this is how it has worked for other people. Even if it's testimonials from other companies, their competitors, maybe other companies that have used your sport before sponsorship and have said something in the press of how great it works. There's loads of them on the internet in interviews or when people are renewing their sponsorship, they usually say how great it is for the company and how well it's worked use these on the presentation and to show them when you're in front of them. Give them the confidence that what you're selling has worked in the past and it will help you massively. Never miss this out. Mistake number two is people stick to one route. And when I say that, I mean drivers, competitors, they only do one sort of method or try and sell one kind of sponsorship. I want you to mix it up because there's hundreds of ways that you can get sponsored, right? There's so many ways that you can contact a company to sell it, which we've already talked about, but also there's so many things you can offer. You could have one big sponsor, right? A big giant sponsor and you give them everything. You give them the whole world for that and you can try and sell that, right? That's one way of doing it. It's a technique, it might not work. It is a hard one. It's a hard sell, but if you get them, then obviously it pays for the whole year. Great, that's one route. Then you've got the route of having a semi big one or two that are sharing the meat of it and then a few small sponsors. That's another way of going about it. Now you've got a different range of proposals that you can sell to companies that fit. And you know their budgets seem about, okay, this, com this is for a company that's a small company and this is for a, a medium to large one. Fine, that's another route. Then you've got the route of loads of them. You get low 20 sponsors on a car all given a tiny bit of money. And that money pays for the drive or helps for the drive. But interestingly, now it's a network party on your car. This is where you're covered in sponsors and you, you realize that company number two on the bonnet could do business with company number 14 that's on the door. Yeah, they could, because this is a supplier for products that that customer or that company could sell, or they've got similar clients. 
they just work. They offer materials for that company. They can do business together. I'm the middle person, I get commission. Brilliant. Or I've just provided them with a benefit. This is a network party. Then you decide, okay, number six, company number six over here could do business with company number 10 that's over there on the card. This is interesting. Now we're starting to open up a whole networking party on your car that other companies can buy into. So now it's another benefit. They're not just getting the advertisement and the race tickets and the things that you're offering them. It's actually B2B that's going on here. That's really interesting to certain companies. Then you know who to target. Again, this is a different route. Then you can do another route is piggybacking, which I spoke about before, which is using your car when it's paid for already this current year to start deals for the following year. Or you sponsor, sorry, you help to get sponsorship for a high prestigious team. And in doing so, you get commission for that to pay for your racing if you're in a low end championship. Another route. What I'm trying to say is there's so many routes to get sponsorship. Don't just stick to one. Explore them all. Supply details, uh, deals. So you go to a race team and you say, I can get sponsorship just for the insurance from this insurance company and they'll sponsor that. You'll take a cut or you'll get your budget knocked down because you're providing that for a race team that you're going to race for. Honestly, there's so many different routes. You've got to explore them all, try them all, see what works. And in doing so, it opens so many other doors. Because if you do have all these, again, the network party, if you have all of these 20 sponsors on the car, you never know when that, where that's going to lead to. There's a few of them sponsors that are just testing you out to see if you're giving them a good time. And they're going to double, triple, quadruple their input of money the following year if you do that. You never know where it's going to lead. That's the great thing about sponsorship. You try all these routes. You're constantly doing it. Like we talked about before, it takes time to do this. So you've got to know that it's going to take time. But you get opportunities that you couldn't even forecast. You're like, wow, yeah, I didn't think about that. Always explore. Always discover new things, new ways, and new benefits that you can provide companies, a new way of packaging it all up because it is worth it. Sponsorship does provide value for companies. You must always remember that, but you just must remember how to package it and how to offer it. Got it? And in at number one is people don't take action in the first place. Wow. Did you expect that? Well, it's the truth. There's too many people, drivers, sportsmen, that have got to get this sponsorship, but they find out that a week has passed and they still haven't done anything about it. None of what I've said to you, none of what I'm teaching, none of what I've taught through Get The Drive is going to work for you if you don't bloody take action in the first place, if you don't do it. It's so obvious, and to be honest, <laughs> it's the only thing. If you took action, you'd find out about all these other 10. You'd find out on the way because you're pushing yourself every day and you're doing it and you're calling people and you're sending proposals out and you're learning, you're adjusting. You'll find out all this other stuff. But if you're not taking the action, it's not going to happen. It's the one truth of success, of getting what you want out of life is the action side of it, doing it. It's so simple. But if you speak to anybody who's got what you want, they will tell you, if they weren't gifted it, they will tell you, I just did it and I carried on doing it. That's it. I worked out the rest of the stuff on the way. It's like doing a marathon. If you're thinking about doing the marathon, but you never actually start it without taking those steps every single time you want to go forwards, then you're not going to do it. You'll just stay put at the start line. I don't want you to stay at the start line. If you're going to make this happen, you've just got to do it. Even if you haven't got a clue, the best place to start is to just start. So many of us, when we're starting a company, we don't know what we're doing. We never know what we're doing. We just sort of like, oh, okay, we'll figure it out on the way. It's scary, but we'll do it. We're intelligent enough as human beings to sort it out as it comes. So you'll make a cold call and you'll be freaking out about it, but you'll learn from it. You'll get better. You'll adjust for the second person that you call. You'll freak out about that a little bit less and you'll get different feedback. Maybe the same, but you'll try and adjust again. And honestly, by the time you're calling the fifth person, you'll pretty much got it down but you won't get that far without starting with the first person. You've got to do this. You've just got to take action. You've got to do it. Less listening and watching things like what I'm talking to you on now, this video. Don't spend time wasting, you know, wasting time on videos and getting motivated. Just do it. Just take step one. Go forward. Do something today. What could you do today to help you get sponsorship? 
write it down. That's the one thing I'm gonna do. And I bet you, you won't stop there. You'll say, actually, I like that. I'm gonna do another thing. And you'll start to get momentum, motivation to do it. So number one is the biggest one. You just gotta bloody do it. Okay, so here are the top mistakes, the top 11 mistakes all on your screen. Take a look, think about which ones of these am I doing <laughs> or am I doing all of them? Because these are the things that I keep seeing competitors, sports people, drivers do over and over again and it's holding them back and it's stopping them from getting the sponsorship, sponsorship dollars that they deserve. You're in a sport that has value. You're in a sport that has value to companies and helps them achieve their goals. You just got to communicate it in the right way. Get the package together that allows them to see that they can achieve their goals through your sport and you're the person to do that. And these are the 11 mistakes that I keep seeing people do over and over again that's stopping them communicating to companies what they can provide. And that's it. That's my top 11, there are obviously more. Uh, but these are the type of things that I did when I was driving. So I know, I use this as sort of like, what would I advise small Enzo, younger Enzo to do with what I know now and what I've seen? What would I tell him? And these 11, pretty much in a negative way, because these are the, the mistakes that I was doing back then and I must tell myself not to do, but they're the 11. If I was to start again, I'd make sure that I wouldn't trip over these 11 blocks that are in the way, and I don't want you to. Don't fall for these mistakes. If you know that some of these are the ones that you're doing on a daily basis, stop it. It's time to get real. If you really want sponsorship, then you've got to know about the mistakes as well as what to do is what not to do because then it allows you to do the right thing. You got this? You promise? Okay, that's all for today. My top 11. Look at them again. Listen to them again. Make sure you're not doing them and I'll see you next time.